The very first thing what we would like to improve on our PCB is this area here, especially on the bottom layer. There are many tracks routed very close to each other. And uh, what I would like to improve is the distance between this I2C signal and this uh, PVM signal. Maybe we don't want to route them too close to each other because these PVM signals can be noisy. So a very simple way how we could improve it, um, we can just move this via down here and then move this track. Go on top layer, delete this, move this via, maybe also move this one a little bit. We can move this track, put this down. Let's have a look how we improve it. Okay, now there is much bigger clearance or much bigger distance between this I square C1 SDA and the uh, light green signal. This is what we would like to have. Go back on the top and again temporarily connect this uh, power which we disconnected. So press W, connect this this and this. I'm going to move also these um, vias which are up here so we have more space for these tracks and maybe I'm going to move it like this. Don't route these uh, tracks very close to the board edge. Maybe we would like to have them like this. And I will just make this in one row. Okay. We can make this uh, button uh, connection nicer. I can see we can... Oops. We can improve it here, especially on this top layer, it is ugly. Again, do not route it too close to the board edge, maybe like this. Sometimes the rerouting uh, connection is easier and faster than trying to adjust the existing tracks. Perfect. We would like to make more space around this uh, interrupt signal because, you know, interrupt signals, there must be no noise. Otherwise, uh, your software will pick up some uh, random interrupts which uh, really didn't happen. So, uh, placing these uh, tracks far away from other signals is going to uh, prevent, uh, for example, crosstalk or noises uh, being picked up from the other signals. So I'm going to move it maybe like this, away from this button, button signal. And we also would like to move it away from these PVM signals. If we move this, We could maybe move this via a 
and then we would have a lot of space to move this signal away from this interrupt. So I'm going to disable top layer and reroute this. Escape. Delete. Delete. So we can have a lot of space between this signal and this one. I'm going to move also this. We can also have uh, quite a lot of signal, <laughs> a lot of space between these signals which are here. So this space and this space, it is quite okay. And there is a lot of space between this signal and the I square C tracks. We can make also this I square C signal nicer. We can easily move this ground via maybe up here and make this nice. We can also play with these I square C signals which are here. Maybe move them a little bit, make it nicer, bigger space. So let's have a look. Um, I'm going to delete them. And we can reroute them again. Go on top layer. And maybe place this via even closer to the pads, maybe like this. Okay, mm, too close. Okay. Go on the bottom layer. Oops, 
This is ugly. You can play with it. <laughs> so, you know, it looks nice, you like it. Okay. And now maybe we can do something with these tracks which are here. Zoom in. Maybe read out this. Adjust this. And have a look what we can do with this. I like it a lot. I will move this uh, a little bit down so it is in the middle. And uh, what we can do, we can learn how to route a little bit wider tracks. We can make these which are here, we can make them a little bit wider. There are more ways how you can change width of a track. Uh, the first one is select it. And in this properties window, change the width, let's say to 0.5. Or I'm going to delete this one. When you are routing a track, press W, left click. You can press tab on your keyboard and you can set the width here. Escape. Or I'm going to delete this one press W, left click, you can press Shift W and you will see this table and you can set uh, or you can select the width here, left click. Left click, 0.5, enter. And uh, don't forget uh, if you would like to continue routing with the default uh, with 0.3, you will need to change it then back here. 0.3, enter. Go on the top layer. Make it active. Uh, we are not going to make these tracks uh, wider because then uh, we would make also these paths a little bit bigger uh, and I don't want to do it uh, but we can uh, make these tracks wider so left click press control left click left click change the width to 0.5 enter hide the bottom layer and uh, move them a little bit because I can see they are very close 
uh, to these vias, I guess there will be error. So I'm going to move it. See, there would be error. Okay. Left click, press control, left click, left click and change this to 0 0.5. These are the connections for the LED from the power through LED and then to ground through transistors to ground. So I'm going to delete this one. I don't like it and just redraw it. Make this nicer and also this one. Okay, and also we would like to make uh, these connections to ground a little bit wider. So again, select, press control, select also this one and this one and change it to 0 0.5. Nice. Okay. And now we can improve this power which is here. Uh, We need to move this uh, I square C one SDA because it's routed very close here. Maybe like this. Okay. Delete W. Change the width, press tab, 0 0.3. Okay. Make this wider. and make this nicer. Press W, zoom in, left click, press tab, 0 0.5, enter, left click, left click, left click, tap, 0 0.3, enter, left click, left click, W, left click, left click, left click, left click escape actually I noticed that the paths on this accelerometer are smaller than our tracks can you see it? tracks are wider and uh, maybe for better soldering Maybe we don't want to use so white tracks. So let's make them uh, as white as the path. So left click here, double check the path width 
and it's uh, 0 0.28 and we are going to make these uh, tracks a little bit thinner so I'm going to select them left click, control, left, left select all these tracks which are connected to our accelerometer and change the width to be what is the right number? 0 0.28 that's the width of the path and watch what is going to happen okay enter now the track width is exactly same as the pad width okay before we continue double check the bottom layer because we moved vias we would like to be sure the bottom layer is still okay we can maybe improve this and also uh, what we are going to do we are going to check the uh, ground plane because uh, here are many vias so we would like to be sure the ground uh, nicely flows over the whole board because otherwise you see around these vias there are some holes we would like to be sure these holes are not going to cut off any pieces of our board from a uh, ground plane uh, we need to refresh the ground plane so just uh, select it and here rebuild the copper area I'm going to disable this top layer and uh, yeah this seems to be fine there is there is a lot of space between the vias for uh, ground to flow under uh, under our components on layer 2 I'm looking here maybe I don't really like this maybe we could could we move it a little bit uh, there is the track on the bottom layer no it's the path can we move this okay okay I like it much more now it is better I'm going to make uh, these uh, power and ground connections wider I always make the power and ground connections wider than standard tracks change to 0 0.5 also this one and maybe I will redraw this connection tap 0.3 escape let's have a look what we could improve here and you know exactly what we are going to improve we are going to make uh, these power and ground connections wider we can make them nicer and uh, we can also make this a little bit wider what is the width of the path 0.364 so left click here and also here change this to 0.364 okay next we are going to improve this uh, layout on the output of our LDO and there are a few improvements what I would like to do uh, first 
I would like to move this via somewhere behind this uh, capacitor. So uh, we would like to have the connection like the output pin of the LDO, then the capacitor, and only after the capacitor we would like to have the vias and the rest of the circuit. Okay, so that's the reason why I would like to move this via behind the capacitor. And because this is power, maybe we would like to use multiple vias and uh, this current from this LDO is not going to be high. You don't really need multiple vias, but it is good practice. So when you will be designing your own boards, you will remember like, oh, I'm doing layout for power supply. Maybe I would like to use multiple vias. And uh, again, multiple vias can help with power dissipation in case this LDO gets hot. If you have multiple vias, then the heat can go inside of our board and spread on the layer 3 where we are going to have big power plane. Uh, so uh, uh, because of the heat, what we can also do, we can uh, place uh, some small copper area also on the top layer. Uh, it's not going to be big, so it's not going to help much, but we can uh, make this uh, copper area um, everywhere where we have space. Okay, so these are the changes what we would like to do. Move this via here, maybe place multiple vias and draw copper area around the output of our LDO. We are going to make some space here around these pads because we would like to place two vias maybe somewhere here and the copper polygon around. So I'm going to move this via first. Maybe move this one and this one. Okay. Maybe we would like to move this track which is on the bottom. Okay, like this. Okay, and let's improve it. Delete these existing 3.3 volt connections. Click on this button, copper area. Select here 3.3 volts. Okay, and maybe draw something like this left click left 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 right select the polygon and we don't want to have this uh, thermal relief because we would like the heat from the chip go through this polygon to the vias so we would like to change this path connection to direct okay press w and connect this
something very similar we are going to do also for this plus v in we are going to add multiple vias and draw a copper area so i'm going to delete all these existing connections and maybe also this one i'm going to copy this via select it Control c uh, left click into middle of the via now Control v left click Control v left click uh, make it nicer in the know maybe like this okay uh, go and uh, press this copper area button left click be sure you are going to draw plus v in okay left click left click left click left click left click right click select it and same as before we would like to change this path connection to direct okay press w make this connection here again maybe like this and perfect we are going to draw copper area also around these ground pins of our LDO so I'm going to move this via delete all these connections click on the copper area button be sure ground net is selected okay and now left click left 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 right select the copper area left click here and change path connection to direct zoom in and we are going to improve this area uh, first i would like to move this uh, track as far as possible away from this path uh, because uh, this is the same net connection you may not get a DRC error if this track is routed for example like this okay but uh, your PCB manufacturer they may not be able to uh, manufacture this kind of very teeny tiny small space and I don't know what they would do with this kind of layout so uh, uh, even if it's the same net connection you still would like to keep big distance or uh, minimum clearance between these two objects so I'm going to move it as far as possible away from the path maybe like this and also we would like to place uh, two vias on this uh, capacitor so I'm going to move this one here and uh, press W I'm going to place another one here and make the connections wider left click control left click change this to 0 0.5 enter we are going to improve layout for this plus v bat connection first delete this existing connection and we are going to draw copper area left click on copper area button be sure plus v bat net is selected okay left click left 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 click left left right select the new copper area change the path connection to direct and you can see here uh, some of the copper area is 
cut off a little bit because this is too close so I'm going to move this select the copper area again and rebuild perfect we would like to improve also this uh, plus 5v usb connection so i'm going to delete all these uh, select press ctrl left click left click left click delete uh, click on this copper area button left click be sure you are going to draw plus 5v usb net okay and uh, let's connect it left click left 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 click left click left click left left and you know what to do go all around of our connections left click right click and let's see what will happen select it direct connection and um, it looks good we can leave it like this it's nice There are two more ground connections on this top layer, what I would like to improve. First, this. And also this. select oops like this direct huh. and now we don't really need to worry about how close is this track to this path we can maybe just improve it and uh, change the width to 0 0.5 okay we improved the top layer we improved the bottom layer now let's have a look at layer 3 the power layer i'm going to make it visible i'm going to make it active and hide top and bottom layer On this uh, power layer, we are going to have two power planes, plus V in and plus 3V3. First, uh, select this plus V in, press H to highlight. We would like to see what we need to connect these vias with this path, which is here. And uh, also think how you are going to draw this uh, copper area uh, think about the space between the vias you would like to be sure there will be enough copper going uh, between these vias so what i'm going to do i'm going to unhighlight this delete the existing connection i will move this little bit so we have enough space for drawing the copper area okay click on copper area button be sure you are going to draw the plus v in net okay zoom in 
left click uh, do not draw the copper area up to the edge of the board okay uh, maybe draw it even a little bit deeper than uh, our ground plane the ground plane is ending maybe somewhere here so i'm going to end or i'm going to draw the end of this plus v in copper area maybe somewhere here a little bit deeper left click go at the edge of the board here left click don't forget we don't want to draw here because this is the part of the pcb which maybe we will cut off so go somewhere here left click and uh, maybe here we would like to go a little bit down because this is uh, quite limited space between the vias so uh, left click left click left 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 click left click left click left right and let's see what we have created This is actually good. A lot of space for copper here. Also, here is a lot of space. A lot of space here. This looks good. Perfect. To draw the plus 3v3 uh, copper area is going to be super simple because this uh, copper is going to have higher priority. This copper is going to be uh, drawn first when this uh, layer is uh, rendered. It means we can simply just draw this plus 3 with 3 all around our board and uh, it will automatically flow around this uh, existing copper area which is already here. You will see what I mean. So I'm going to select this, delete select all these and delete them click on the copper area be sure we are going to draw plus 3v3 okay and simply just draw from this edge down here uh, we would like to maybe end it somewhere here left click left left right see nice if uh, you would like to play with the priorities of polygons you can go to tools copper area manager and here you can change it okay for example, if uh, we select uh, this 3v3 and if we move it up, what will happen, do you know? Apply. <gasps> Plus v in is gone. And it's because first, uh, the software will first draw the uh, plus 3v3 and uh, then there is no space for plus v in. That's why we don't see it. But if we first draw plus V in and then we draw plus 3 V3, it will be visible. Okay? This is sometimes useful uh, because sometimes you would like to have uh, polygons with higher priorities and you would like to control this. That's why I wanted to mention it in this video when we have a closer look on this copper area 
you may notice places like this and this and again this space which is here it is much smaller than uh, the minimum clearance what PCB manufacturer can actually manufacture so uh, what they are going to do with this when you send your PCB into production what they will do here uh, I think they will uh, make this space wider automatically but if you would like to have full control over your PCB then uh, maybe we would like to fix these places and very simple way how we can fix this one is for example move this via I'm going to move it a little bit okay and let's redraw the area perfect see this one is very simple to fix I'm going to move this a little bit up but this one is going to be a little bit more tricky maybe move this on the other side this could help okay let's try fixed fixed this is okay these uh, spaces are quite wide so we don't need to worry about this this uh, layer 3 seems to be okay uh, we would like to check also layer 2 with a uh, big ground copper area so go here enable layer 2 disable this one make layer 2 active uh, we would like to uh, refresh the copper area uh, easy way is go to tools copper area manager and watch what is going to happen okay you can see uh, we need to update it here so when we press apply it will be automatically updated and uh, here is one teeny tiny area maybe what we would like to fix zoom in have a look how it is connected okay we need to move it a little bit down and let's see what happened okay 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 one of the most important moments of doing PCB layout is coming go to design check DRC left click well done there are no DRC errors and all the nets are connected yes as it is now uh, this board would work perfectly fine but uh, there are still couple of topics what I would like to cover in this tutorial because uh, they can help you when you will be designing more complex boards and uh, the first thing what I would like to talk about and uh, what we could maybe improve is to move ground plane to different layer mm why we would like to move 
ground plane in our PCB. As it is now, everything is connected, so why should we care? PCB layout is not only about connecting pins. It is a little bit more complicated. And um, when you will be doing a layout for more complex boards, then uh, when you have a signal layer where many tracks are routed, as the neighbor layer, you would like to use ground plane. If you would like to know more, I highly recommend you to watch this my video with Eric Bogatin, where Eric is explaining how signals are traveling through your boards. But uh, one of the very simple ways uh, what you can imagine what is happening on your PCB when you place ground plane very close under your tracks is uh, for example, how the fields around the tracks are going to look. Because when you have a track on your PCB, and when a signal is traveling through this track, then there will be field around the track. And if you place a ground plane very close under the track, then this field around the track is going to be very small. It's kind of going to be picked up very quickly with this ground plane. If you move the ground plane far away from, uh, from the track which you are routing, then these fields around the track are going to be bigger. And uh, what do you think, what can happen if you have these big fields around your tracks on your PCB? These fields can be, for example, picked up by the other tracks on your board and they can uh, introduce noise on the other tracks on your board. Or what else can happen if these fields are going to be very, very large? You can have problems with EMC or EMI. Okay, so one of the reasons why we would like to place ground plane under our tracks is to control these fields. And uh, when we have a look on our PCB, most of our tracks are routed on this bottom layer. On the top layer, there are components, but not like many tracks routed. So that's the reason why I decided that maybe it would be good if uh, on our layer 3, that's the layer which is neighbor layer of this bottom layer, if on layer 3, on this one, we have very nice solid ground plane. At this moment, these are the power planes, so we will move the power planes on layer 2 and we will uh, take the ground plane on layer 2 and move it on layer 3. Let's do it. To move these power planes, it is super simple. First, be sure both uh, layers, the inner layer 1 and inner layer 2, are visible. This is very important. Then go to Tools, Copper Area Manager. And here, we would like to move this ground plane from inner uh, layer 1. We would like to move it to inner layer 2. And uh, we would like to move these power planes from inner layer 2 to inner layer 1. And also this one move to inner layer 1. Press apply. Now disable this uh, inner two, and you can see power planes are on layer two. And when I enable the layer three, then now we have very nice ground plane on layer three, directly above the tracks which are routed on the bottom layer. Perfect, this is exactly what we would like to have in our PCB. Let's keep this tutorial simple and let's not talk about uh, tracks which are routed too close to the edge of the board, which is not really ideal. 
uh, let's not talk about uh, moving ground plane away from the layer which was directly below the components because this is uh, ground plane directly under the components it can be also very helpful and we don't have it in our board anymore but it's okay when you are doing PCB layout very often you need to make some compromises so it's fine uh, but there is still something what I would like to do on uh, layer 2 so I'm going to make it visible uh, I would like to adjust the shape of this plus V in power plane I would like to have this plus V in in the area uh, where uh, these components are using the plus V in so in this area where the LED circuit is routed let's do it uh, let's uh, learn how we can adjust shape of a copper area which already exists on our board zoom in uh, select the plus V in uh, copper area just hover cursor over the edge of the copper area left click and uh, we can adjust the shape just by moving these green points I can uh, hover cursor over this green point press left button on your mouse hold it down and move it down here move also this one up here and we can move also this one and these other points, uh, you can just delete them. You can just double click on this point, it will disappear. And double click also on this one. Now you can do right click and copper area, rebuild all. And this is what we would like to have. Okay, we adjusted the shape of this plus V in, so all these components are above the power plane the topic what I would like to also mention in this tutorial is uh, about impedance uh, basically when we move the ground plane close under our tracks uh, on the bottom layer we can uh, follow something what is called impedance and uh, again if you would like to know more you can just search on internet but uh, at this moment only what you may need to know is that uh, many tracks especially digital tracks in uh, PCBs are routed by 50 ohm impedance and uh, when you will be designing more complex boards this can be very important for this simple board it's not like very critical but I'm going to show you how you can uh, very simply uh, see what kind of track width you may need to uh, use in uh, your PCB to route your tracks by 50 ohm impedance I'm going to open new tab search for JLC PCB stack up open this uh, web page leave it open and also open this impedance calculator right click open link in a new tab In this calculator, we can calculate what kind of track width we need to use to get 50 ohm impedance tracks on the PCBs manufactured by JLC PCB company. So basically each uh, PCB manufacturer will have their own calculators or they will provide you with track width what you need to follow if you would like to 
route tracks by 50 ohm impedance on your board. This calculator is specific for JLC PCB. So uh, we know uh, that we would like to calculate the impedance, so I'm going to select this. We would like to calculate the track width for impedance 50 ohm on 4 layer PCB, uh, thickness of the PCB 1.6 mm. Uh, we would like to uh, calculate the track width on the bottom layer, so outer layer, and it is single-ended impedance because these are single-ended track, they are not differential. Click on this button and here you can see what kind of track width we need to use. 11.55 mil. If we convert this 11.55 mil to millimeters, it is 0 0.3 millimeter. So, what does it mean? It means that if we use this stack up JLC7628, which is here, JLC7628 stack up, these are the exact uh, dimensions for the stack up. So, if we use this stack up, then in our PCB, all the tracks routed on the bottom layer, and when the layer 3 is ground plane, uh, all the tracks routed on the bottom layer with uh, width 0.3 mm will have 50 ohm impedance. Okay? Please don't get scared. If this sounds too complicated, you can completely ignore it. You will only need this if you will be designing more complex PCBs. For this simple PCB, you don't need to worry, it will work if you route it by any impedance. But still, when we will be ordering PCB, we may need to be specific and we may need to ask for this kind of stack up. I think uh, I'm going to try it. I think when you are ordering PCB, you can select it somewhere. So, uh, for layer 1.6, and uh, yes, it is here, impedance, yes, and here you select what kind of stack up you would like to use. Our PCB is almost finished. What we would like to do next, we would like to add some text on our PCB, some nodes. And uh, usually you will add this uh, text on seal screen layer. This is usually the white color on the PCB. And uh, on the top side of our PCB, there is not really much space. So what we are going to do, we are going to add the text on the bottom side of our PCB. So I'm going to disable this and also this. I'm going to enable the bottom seal layer, make it active, and let's add some text here. Click on this text button here, or you can press S on your keyboard. Left click, escape. Uh, the text is mirrored, and this is okay because it is on the bottom side of our PCB. Select it. We would like to make it smaller, so change the height to be one millimeter, enter, and uh, change the text to be plus. I'm going to move it close to this connector, uh, and we would like to have this plus sign here, so when we will be soldering these wires, we will know that this path is the plus for the battery. You can select this plus symbol, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, left click escape, select it, change it to minus, and we can place it here on this other side of the connector, maybe like here, and like here. Be sure the line width of the text when I select it, be sure this line width 
is bigger than what are the capabilities of JLCPCB. So when we go on JLCPCB website and when we check the capabilities, down here for legend you can see minimum line width is 6 mils or 0.153 millimeter and we are currently using uh, 0.2 millimeter so this is good we can use this line width for our text we also need to check the minimum text height so when we go on JLCPCB website the minimum text height is 0.8 millimeter and as you know our text height is 1 millimeter so this is also okay when uh, we are talking about this area uh, there is something what we could improve uh, basically this is the place where the ground is coming into our board this is the uh, ground pin of the battery uh, this is the place where the ground from the usb is connected and uh, rest of the ground plane for our board is connected through this teeny tiny place here we could improve it if we move this V a little bit further then we could have like more copper uh, which will be connecting this place of our PCB with the rest of the PCB so what I'm going to do I'm simply going to move it maybe like here to copper area manager apply and now it is much better okay now the copper flows through this area and also through this area here select the plus symbol ctrl c ctrl v left click select it change the text to battery enter move it down here maybe like this ctrl v left click select it change this to debug move it down here ctrl v left click ctrl v left click change this to number one change this to number five move this down here so when uh, someone will be connecting the uh, jtag they will know this is pin number one and this is pin number five use 3d view to double check how it looks press shift hold it down press left button hold it down and rotate your PCB one five plus minus battery connector debug connector we are going to add some text here zoom in click on this text button left click left 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 escape change this to v r g b and make it look nice maybe like this copy this ctrl c ctrl v 
control c control v control c control v control c control v We can also add a simple mark, which will tell us where we can cut off this piece of the PCB from the rest of the PCB. So I'm going to use place rectangle and maybe draw something like this. Okay. And we can also add names of these pins on the I2C header. Zoom in. Click on this text button. Left click, escape, select it. Write SDA, enter. Press spacebar to rotate and place it maybe like here. Control C, Control V. Control V, Control V, change this to SCL. This one is going to be GND, like ground, and this one is going to be BTN button. Select all four, press Control, left click, left click, left click. We would like to align them like this and uh, distribute the space between them, make it same. Can move it a little bit maybe like here. Perfect. We can add some copyright and your name or your company name. So I'm going to use text, left click, escape, change the text to, oops, let's say C, like copyright, 2021, Federal Academy, and I'm going to make it bigger. Let's try to rotate. Maybe a little bit smaller, 1.5. Okay. This seems to be better. And we can also add the uh, name of the project. Control C, Control V. Tiny version 1, issue 1, enter, place it maybe here, we can also make it a little bit bigger if it fits, we can align them and maybe move them a little bit Use 3D view to see how your board looks. Maybe I could try to move this uh, somewhere here, how it will look, I don't know. Okay, this looks better. 
feel free to use your names okay be proud on the board what you have just designed nice very nice we have finished all the text what we would like to have on our board and now when you go on JLC PCB website resources SMT assembly you will notice that the minimum PCB size what they can assemble is 20 by 20 millimeters the size of our PCB is 9 by 56 millimeters so uh, we need to somehow make our PCB a little bit bigger so they can assemble our board and very simple trick what we can use is to panelize our PCB do this click on tools panelize we would like to use stamp hall column one rows two column spacing two row spacing two and press apply when you create a panel then basically you are placing one pcb multiple times into one panel in our case we created one panel with one column and two rows that's what you can see here and here in this empty space there will be our pcb and we also specified uh, the way how these pcbs are connected together it's this here uh, when we have a look on these panelized settings here you can see we specified one column two rows we specified the uh, spacing so this is two millimeters and we also specified the connection how it is connected together uh, is using stamp hall and that's what you can see here okay basically all this is going to be removed this is going to be space between the pcbs only this is the place where they will be connected together and there will be these holes so we can easily separate them if you use vcat uh, there will be line between the uh, pcbs you need to then break it but i really prefer to use this because i would like to have uh, as much nice edge around our pcb as possible and also we have components and tracks very close to the edges if we would use vcat we could maybe damage something so this is better for our case when we created panel of our pcb we made the pcb bigger so this is nine millimeters this is two millimeters that's 11 and this is another nine millimeters so together this is 20 millimeters by 56 millimeters it means now jlc pcb can manufacture and assemble this board and also by creating this panel we will be actually getting uh, instead of one PCB, we will be getting two PCBs. And now we are ready to generate the files for manufacturing. And uh, actually, I'm very curious what is going to happen because I have actually prepared this project, uh, but uh, during this uh, tutorial and based on your feedback, I made so many changes that now it is like completely new project and uh, I really hope everything will work out uh, perfectly fine. So let's see uh, what is going to happen. Uh, first, we would like to run the RC check and then uh, we will generate the Gerber files. 
which are used to manufacture your PCB, we will generate BOM, bill of material, with a list of all the components what we would like to fit, and we will generate pick and place file, which is going to tell the machines uh, where exactly are uh, the components placed on your PCB. So first, uh, let's uh, go to design. Let's uh, run the RC check. And uh, no errors, all nets are connected. So uh, we can try to generate the manufacturing files. Of course, if uh, in your case, you see some uh, errors or unconnected nets, you will need to fix uh, these uh, problems before you generate the files for manufacturing. Uh, to fix errors, uh, usually just click on the error and it will show you where the error is and you will be able to figure out uh, what exactly you will need to fix and very similar with unconnected nets, okay? Just double check which one is unconnected and connected on your board. Once uh, also on your board there are no errors and everything is connected, then you can continue and together now we can generate the files. To generate the files which are needed to manufacture your PCB, go to Fabrication, select PCB Fabrication File Gerber, left click. Yes, check DRC, left click. And uh, down here, click on this button, Generate Gerber, left click. Here you can see our Gerber files were generated and now we will need to upload them to JLC PCB website. Click on this button to go on JLC PCB website. Click on this quote now. We are going to upload the files what we have just generated. Left click find the file, open, and uh, these uh, settings which are here are going to be automatically updated based on our Gerber files and we will adjust some of them a little bit. So you can see uh, this website it automatically recognized that uh, we have created four layer PCB with uh, dimensions 20 by 56 millimeters. Uh, we would like to order five uh, PCBs, so in total we are going to have ten PCBs. Five is the minimum. See, there is no less than five. Uh, different designs, there is only one uh, design on this PCB. Delivery format, single, PCB thickness 1.6. Impedance, what uh, we are going to set here, do you remember? Yes and we would like to use this JLC7628 stack up. Layer stack up. Here we are going to set which files are on what layers. So the top layer is Gerber top layer GTL. The second layer in our PCB is, do you remember? Inner 1. Third layer is Inner 2 and the bottom layer is uh, this one, Gerber bottom layer GBL. Now, uh, first uh, let's uh, select this surface finish because uh, we should use LED free. I'm going to click here. If uh, you like, you can also use this one. This is the uh, gold surface on, uh, on uh, the pads but it is a little bit more expensive. Oh, watch when I click here. It's going to cost $23. This one is like $12. And it's not, not really necessary to have this one because they are going to solder the components. So I'm going to leave this. And uh, if you like, you can use different PCB color, but watch what is going to happen when I click here. See? Uh, you may need to pay extra and it may take longer. So if you choose 
one of these other colors it's always going to be a little bit more expensive so i will go for the cheapest one and this is also the fast fastest one uh, outer copper weight 1 oz uh, 0.5 gold fingers no material you can use the standard no fully test castellated holes no remove order no so this all other settings they are okay and if you like you can also uh, have a look at these uh, gerbers what we have generated you can click on this gerber viewer and uh, you can just double check if everything looks okay these holes are quite close to our paths but this is going to be okay and if you would like to double check the bottom this is okay i'm going to close this and now uh, we can generate the files which we will need for this assembly process go back to our board go to fabrication left click on bomb and export bomb you can see uh, you downloaded uh, this uh, new file close this click on fabrication and left click on pick and place file now uh, we are not going to have any components fitted on the bottom so i we don't really care about this and uh, we don't want to fit components on the uh, panelized pcb so we are not going to check this i would like to only pay for five assembled pcbs i don't want to assemble 10 pcbs so leave bot unchecked and click on export again this is going to generate a file which we will need to upload on the jlc pcb website go back to our order scroll down enable the smt assembly left click here coupon free smt assembly for your pcb order hmm, i don't know <laughs> Uh, we would like to only assemble the top side there are all the components what we need to assemble i would like to assemble five boards so leave this default confirm and now we would like to upload the files what we have just generated so left click here here and uh, this is the file this is the bomb file left click here and uh, this is the pick and place file click on next and let's see what will happen as you can see they don't have some of the components in stock but uh, it's very important they have the accelerometer and the microcontroller so i'm not really worried about this diode or about this led now, it would be nice to have this led but uh, because we have there the header we can basically connect there any rgb led and this diode it is a standard diode we can buy it from different source and uh, we are not going to fit any header so i'm not really worried about this one if you like you can uh, unselect the components here the components which you don't want to fit but uh, i would rather adjust the uh, bill of material and the pick and place files which we have generated directly from our board so we will go inside of these files and we will delete the components which we don't want to fit on our board i will go back here and uh, once we update these uh, files we will upload them again and then we will have a look 
at the results. I'm going to find the files what we have generated. Here they are. <laughs> and uh, we are going to open this bomb bill of material. Double click. And this is how the file looks. It is a very simple file. Basically, you can see it is just a list of all the components which are on your board. And everything what we have to do is just delete the components which we don't want to fit. And when we go inside of our schematic, the components what we don't want to fit are R6, 7, 8, and 9. And also, we don't want to fit any of these headers. If you like, you can actually fit this H2 header because you will need this header for programming. But I would like to uh, solder this header by myself because I need to solder it special way. Also, I would like to say that if you ask JLC PCB to fit this header, it may cost a little bit extra because it is a true hole component and maybe they will need to solder it manually, I don't know. Or if you like, you can also buy this header separately and solder it by yourself. Same is what I'm going to do. So let's go back into our file and we are going to delete all the headers Watch here, okay, designator. Here you can see these are all the headers. So left click, press shift, left click, right click, delete. Uh, we are going to delete R6 and R7. Left click, right click, delete. And I'm going to delete this R9, R8. And I'm going to adjust this number change it to 4. And we would like to also maybe uh, change this ID, so I'm going to delete this and I'm going to do it again like this. So these numbers are in order. Click on File, Save As. We would like to save it as a CSV file. I'm going, I'm going to call it like version 1 and save, close. We are going to adjust also this pick and place file. So double click to open it. And uh, again, this is a very simple file. You can see there is a list of all the components. But this time, there is information about the location of the components on your PCB, okay? X and Y uh, coordinates uh, on what layer these components are and also the rotation. Now, this rotation is a little bit tricky. If you like, you can actually play with the rotation. A little bit later when we upload this file, on the website, you will see what I'm talking about. Uh, basically, uh, there are like number of different standards which will specify the rotation of footprint, but there is no like one single standard what everyone would follow. So very often happen that uh, you need to adjust the rotation manually because the component on your PCB will not be rotated the correct way. Uh, but I'm not going to do it because in JLC PCB they can do it by themselves. Uh, but if you like, you can do it. From this list, uh, what we would like to really do is remove all the components what we don't want to fit. So these are R8. I'm going to use left click here, press Ctrl, hold it down. Uh, we don't want to fit R9, left click. R6, left click, R7, left click. These are the components which are on the bottom side of the PCB. And also we don't want to fit the headers. 
so h4, h3, h1, h5, 6, and h2. Now right click, delete, go to file, save as. We would like to save this file as CSV and I'm going to add version 1 here. Click on save, close. Go back to our order on JLC PCB website uh, and click on this button here, left click. We are going to re-upload the bomb file. So find the version 1, click open, double check if it is here. Uh, we are going to re-upload the pig and place file, left click here and uh, find it. I'm going to copy the name and I'm going to find it here. Click open and uh, click on next. Okay, now this list is a little bit shorter. You can see there are no headers included in this list. Click on next. And this is what is uh, very interesting. So in this uh, view, when you click there on the board, you can zoom in and zoom out, or you can move the board. In this view, you can see uh, some of these components, they have like problems with rotation and uh, with exact position. But uh, as I said, don't worry about this. Down here, you can see that a JLC PCB is saying our engineers will review and fix component orientation. So uh, you will actually receive an email. Uh, once you order this uh, assembly, you will receive an email uh, from JLC PCB where they will correct all these positions and rotations and they will ask you to confirm if the rotation and position is okay. So we are not going to do it. If you like, you can go back to this uh, pick and place file and you can manually adjust the rotation and position. But yeah, I think it would be a lot of work. And uh, as I said, from my previous e experience, they will do it. Uh, down here, you can see what all the components are going to be fit. These are the components which are not in stock, so they are not going to fit them. And uh, that's it. Basically, we can click and save this to our card. Let's finish the order. I'm going to click on checkout. Click on continue. We can use DHL. Click on continue. Continue. I would like to use PayPal and I have six coupons mm, okay I can use this one click on pay and that's it. It's the next day after we sent our board into production and as expected uh, I have got email from JLC PCB. This is what uh, I have received. 
basically they would like to know or they would like to be sure that we only would like to fit components on one of the boards so here you can see our panel we have two pcbs in our panel one is not going to be fitted with components and the second one is going to be fitted also uh, here you can see they corrected the position and rotation of all the components so uh, before you answer be sure you double check these uh, uh, positions especially uh, be careful about the uh, placement or rotation of the components like these capacitors where it is important to place the plus side of the capacitor on the correct path uh, LED rotation is very important so be sure it is rotated correctly uh, this microcontroller can be fitted also wrong way so be sure pin number one is in correct position accelerometer you can see the LED is not fitted and you can also see the diode is not fitted but this is okay because we can fit these when we receive the board uh, once you double check everything and once you are sure all these uh, components are going to be uh, fitted correctly then uh, you can answer the email this is what i sent them back so uh, yes this is correct only one board should be assembled please continue I also confirm all the component rotation is correct and uh, they answer it back and they are going to continue with our board manufacturing. If you would like to see the progress, uh, you can just refresh this uh, web page and uh, here you will see some detailed uh, uh, information like uh, something like this. Yeah, you will see there what is happening for example with your PCB uh, and uh, you can see exactly same also about the assembly but this is my previous order in this new order at this moment we only can see the corrected placement and uh, that's it there is nothing else so uh, every day I'm going to refresh this website and uh, let's see how it goes I'm a little bit worried because uh, this is my previous order uh, my test board for this project was uh, actually a little bit more expensive uh, I paid like 128 dollars and now it is like 83 dollars so I'm not sure what is different I hope everything is okay we will see after you order your board in JLC PCB, don't forget to buy rest of the components what we are going to need. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Farnell because this is like easiest way how to buy components in Slovakia, but you can use DigiKey or anything else what you use to buy components. And uh, I found they actually have these uh, LEDs but they are not in stock so I, I'm not going to order them instead of this uh, SMD LED I found this one so maybe I can try it we can uh, directly solder these pins to the headers and also what I can do I can use maybe some of these LEDs from my previous project I can desolder them and I can solder them on these new boards which will come in uh, I'm going to also buy the header from for programming but uh, I found it very useful maybe when uh, I'm buying this kind of headers buy uh, the longer one and then I can just cut uh, the number of pins what I need so I'm going to buy some of these uh, as I explained, I'm going to buy this LED. Uh, I'm also going to buy this uh, USB connector because last time they forgot to fit it and I had to uh, buy it. And 
I couldn't find the exact diode what we are using, but this one should be compatible. So I'm going to buy this one. And also don't forget to buy the programmer, okay? You will need it. Once I receive the boards, I will continue in this tutorial. So uh, we still uh, may need to have a look at the received board. Uh, we may need to maybe solder down the missing components. And also we are going to learn how to write the software for the board and how to program the microcontroller. If uh, uh, you would like to start with the software, uh, even before you receive your board, you can do it because you can use simulator. What you will need is uh, install this MPLAB software. You can download it down here. Uh, you will also need this uh, MPLAB XC compiler. To be specific, you will need this XC8 compiler. And also once you install the MPLAB, enable this uh, code configurator. It can help you a lot to, uh, you know, write this software. It can save a lot of time. Uh, but all this I will explain in the next videos when we will be learning how to write this software. I only wanted to mention this in case you would like to start with this software before you actually receive your boards. So this is basically... Uh, the part uh, where we finish uh, designing our board. And uh, I would like to thank you very much for watching all these uh, videos. Uh, it was much longer than what I was expecting. So I really, really appreciate that uh, you still keep watching this tutorial. And uh, if you would like to leave some feedback, then uh, leave comments. I'm really curious to know if you found it useful, because, you know, uh, less and less people <laughs> keep watching the next and next uh, video in this tutorial. So sometimes I'm like a little bit worried to create this kind of very complex tutorials because, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I could maybe create more helpful different videos. But I started with this one, so let's finish it. See you next time. Bye.